Bitcoin. What is Bitcoin? In this video I will explain what Bitcoin basically is and how to use it, without going through the technical details behind it. For those of you who are interested in the technical stuff, I recommend the following video. So why do I make a video about Bitcoin which doesn't explain the technical details? Because you don't really need to understand how things work in order to use them. Here are a few examples of things which are used by nearly everybody but are only understood by a few. Laser pointer, mobile phone, GPS, combustion engine, headache pills and so on. A lot of people don't even want to waste their time on trying to understand these things. If you are sick, you don't care why the medication works, you just want to be healthy again. Before we get to the actual topic, I want to discuss the question if a Bitcoin can be valuable even though it's only digital information and isn't backed by anything either. In fact, Bitcoins are only valuable because we assign value to them. But that's exactly the same way we do it with paper money. For example the dollar. Actually a $100 bill is only a piece of paper with green ink on it. But because we believe that it has value and other people too, we can buy goods with it. Now I hear some folks say, yeah, but back in the good old days the dollar was backed by gold. Although that is true, even gold is only valuable because we believe in it. Even if we could find something which would be valuable to everybody at any given time and at any place on earth, we would still have one major issue. We would need a 100% trusted authority which provides a place to keep the coveted good secure, which is used to pack the money up. As a side note, the market price of 1 milli Bitcoin is currently 63 cents. Bitcoin is basically just a system which allows a decentralized network to maintain a digital ledger which can't be compromised. This digital ledger contains every single transaction that was ever made and is stored on every computer which participates in the Bitcoin network. Let's take a closer look. Decentralized means that there is no central authority like a bank which takes care of the transactions. The public ledger isn't stored on a central place but does exist on every computer which has a Bitcoin client on it. Let's assume that in the beginning Peter has 5 Bitcoins. Where Bitcoins come from in the first place will be covered later. You're now looking at a list of all transactions. Peter sent 3 Bitcoin to Tyler, Tyler sent 2 Bitcoin to Maria, Peter transfers one Bitcoin to Martin and Maria transfers one Bitcoin to Martin. By going through that list, your computer can get everyone's account balance. But because this ledger is public, it wouldn't be very smart to use real names, because everyone could see how much money you own. This is why Bitcoin doesn't use names or accounts, but instead Bitcoin addresses. So it would actually look like this. On the left side are the Bitcoin addresses and on the right side the amount of Bitcoins which belong to the owner of the corresponding address. It is very important to understand that there is no such thing as a Bitcoin which is represented by a special order of zeros and ones. There is only the information in the public ledger that this address or person owns a certain amount of Bitcoin. If you understand this you are safe from a lot of misunderstandings. Let's take a closer look on the Bitcoin addresses. To every Bitcoin address there is a corresponding private key. These are the two components of the address key pair. In order to understand the thing about Bitcoin addresses and private keys I will use an analogy. Everyone owns a mailbox. That someone can send you a letter, he needs your address. What in this case would be your Bitcoin address. To open the mailbox you need your key, which in this case would be your private key. You can share your Bitcoin address with anyone who needs to send you something. But your private key must be kept secret. As soon as someone knows your private key he has access to all your Bitcoins. You can have as many mailboxes as you want and give everyone a different address so it's easier to keep track of who sent you something. Right now you are looking at such a address key pair. On the left side there is the Bitcoin address and on the right side the corresponding private key. You can create as much address key pairs as you want. 
They are created randomly and since only a random number generator is needed, you don't have to give away any personal data like your email address or your name. If you want to get a Bitcoin address, you go to bitaddress.org and click on generate new address. A little side note for security reasons, do not use the displayed address because everybody who sees this video knows the private key for this address and therefore everyone would have the key for this mailbox. Some of you might now think, but hey, what happens if two people get the same address by coincidence? Then we are screwed, but hey, no need to worry, this case is extremely unlikely. Imagine two people on earth must pick one grain of sand, how likely is it that they both would pick the same grain? Pretty unlikely, right? Now imagine that every grain of sand represented an entire other earth of additional grains. How likely is it now that two people would pick the same grain of sand if they are randomly distributed? Nearly 0%, right? But that two people get the same address is more than a billion times more unlikely. Actually the only thing you need for Bitcoin is such a address key pair, consisting of your Bitcoin address and your private key. Actually you just need your private key, because you can calculate your address out of your private key. The Bitcoin address is needed for receiving Bitcoin and can't be told anyone. The private key is needed for sending Bitcoins and must be kept in secret. So where do Bitcoins come from in the first place? How many are there and how many will there ever be? The amount and the growth of the Bitcoin supply is predetermined. The Bitcoin project started on the 3rd of January. At the beginning the creation rate was roughly 50 Bitcoin every 10 minutes. This is how the creation rate works. The first 4 years every 10 minutes 50 Bitcoins are created. The next 4 years every 10 minutes 25 Bitcoins. The next 4 years every 10 minutes 12.5 Bitcoins. The next 4 years every 10 minutes 6.25 Bitcoins and so on. Because of this the number of existing Bitcoins approaches asymptotically to 21 million but will never truly reach it. Due to this you are safe from inflation. We get to feel the inflation every day, things get more expensive and you can buy less with the same amount of money. Not with Bitcoin. As of September 2014 there are over 13 million Bitcoins in circulation. So now we know how many Bitcoins are being created and how the supply is limited. But now the big question is, who gets these new created Bitcoins? Do the creator of Bitcoin get them and are they scamming us all? No, those newly created coins are distributed to the miners. Miners are persons who try to solve ongoing mathematical problems which are building on the top of each other. These problems can only be solved with enormous computing power. This computing power helps to maintain the ledger secure. Because in some way all the past computing power is in the ledger. The miner who solves the mathematical problem is allowed to send himself 25 bitcoins out of thin air. As a reward the entire bitcoin network accepts that. These mathematical puzzles are so designed that it takes the entire network on average 10 minutes to solve them. Now you can see the connection between mining and the creation of Bitcoin. Therefore the way money is created is clear and fair. You can also be a miner if you want to, but it's a hardcore business today. Oh and just to point out the most common misconception about mining. You do not calculate Bitcoins. I've read it so many times in the newspaper it's driving me crazy. So after explaining the theoretical part, we're now getting to the question, do we even need Bitcoin? You definitely do not need Bitcoin, but actually you need only very few. Therefore, do we even need Bitcoin is the wrong question. Do you need a car? No, you can walk. Do you need a TV or online banking? Actually the only things you need are a place to sleep, water and food. Therefore the actual question should be, what advantages and disadvantages does Bitcoin have? Let's take a look on it. Bitcoin isn't created out of debt, like any other fiat currency. 
The money supply is ruled by the people and can't be manipulated by banks. There is no possible way that banks or the government can control or manipulate the Bitcoin system. Due to the limitation of the money supply on 21 million Bitcoin, you are safe from inflation. The Bitcoin code is open source. So the source code can be peer reviewed, mistakes can be found easily and you can be sure that the system works really like it is described and that you aren't being scammed. It also allowed a lot of experts in the field of cryptography to prove that Bitcoin, better said, the blockchain technology is secure. If you do it cleverly, you can be anonymous with Bitcoin. The nations can be sent directly to people in need without going through corrupt organizations. Accounts cannot be frozen. The case of WikiLeaks showed us how important that is. In December 2010, PayPal, Mastercard, the Bank of America, Visa and a lot more froze donations to WikiLeaks. As a response, WikiLeaks now asks for donations in Bitcoin. Everybody can use Bitcoin without revealing any personal data. A lot of people don't have access to a bank or can't get a bank account, especially in Africa. So now they can use Bitcoin. The use of the system is free. Merchants don't have to pay big margins to credit card companies. There are no chargebacks with Bitcoin. Once you receive money, it's yours. The sender can't get it back unless you send it back to him. A Bitcoin transaction takes an average 10 minutes, not two days like a bank transaction. A lot of restaurant and bar owners even accept zero confirmation transactions Therefore, a Bitcoin transaction takes only a few seconds. You can access your Bitcoins from anywhere in the world. You can store your private keys on a USB stick, remember them or print them on paper. You can travel with as much Bitcoins as you want. You can't get problems on the airport with the custom. Now I want to discuss some arguments which are often used against Bitcoin. Bitcoin is used to buy drugs. That's true, but you can buy drugs with every currency. The number one currency for buying drugs is the dollar. Next time when you're at your local dealer, you may try to pay him with Bitcoin. If my computer crashes, my Bitcoins will be gone. That's not really true. You only have to back up your wallet, which holds your private keys. You can copy it on a USB stick, an external hard drive or just print them out. The volatility this qualifies Bitcoin as a currency. The volatility is not beneficial for its use as a currency. But there are a lot of services like for example BitPay, which eliminates the exchange rate risk. Another thing you have to keep in mind is that Bitcoin is still very young. And as time goes by and the market cap grows, the volatility will go down. If Bitcoin is going to establish as a commonly used currency, the economy is going to break down because of its deflationary character. Nobody would buy anything with Bitcoin because later they would get more goods for the same amount of Bitcoin. So everybody keeps holding their Bitcoin. But look what happens if I apply the same logic on inflation. Nobody wants to sell anything because if they sell it later, they would get more money. That this argument isn't really true can be observated on technical deflation. Even though nearly all electronics are getting cheaper and better, you don't wait forever to buy them. Let's say you want a new big flat TV. If you wait, you will get it cheaper. But you can't wait and won't wait forever. Maybe you will wait one year, but in the end you are still buying one. Furthermore, isn't it better when people buy things because they want them instead of having to buy them because their money won't be as valuable in the future as it is right now. If I buy bitcoins now and I want to sell them later, but nobody wants to buy my bitcoins, I'm screwed. That's one thing you really don't have to worry about, because every exchange has a lot of sell orders, which you just have to click on and then you can sell your bitcoins. In order to use Bitcoin, you have to have an internet connection. That's not even true either. 
The internet plays a very important part in Bitcoin, but you can use Bitcoin even without an internet connection. For example, you can use Cacacious coins. These are physical coins which carry a private key inside, which is related to a certain Bitcoin address, which has a defined amount of Bitcoins on it. On the outside of the coin is the Bitcoin address. When you pay with physical Bitcoins, you actually change a private key with a product. The best thing about Bitcoin is, if you don't like it, you don't have to use it. It's a free system where nobody is forced to use it. I hope now you get an idea what Bitcoin actually is and if you decide to use it, I wish you a lot of fun using the best currency in the world.